I think we're going. I think we're rolling. Hello. Hello. Is anybody here? Just waiting to see if anybody comes in. So if anybody is in, um, please say hello so that I can see you and, um, and I know that you can hear me. Um, just wait and see if we've got anybody jumping in saying hello. So we've been joined by Julianne. Hi, Julianne. Beck. Hi, Beck. So if, if anybody's joining and you uh, want to let me know that you can hear me, that would be really good. <laughs> Adelaide. Okay, so can someone just say if they if they can hear me? Just make sure you can hear me. I'm going to assume excellent. Good, thank you, Gillian. All right then. Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to make a start. My name is Mandy. Um, you probably um, will know me. Um, You'll see me on here as Amanda Parry, but you, you might also know me as Mandy Gibson. I'm the uh, editor of Serpent Star, and, uh, which is the, uh, for those who don't know, is the quarterly magazine of the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids for, for the Southern Hemisphere. Um, we call it Southern Hemisphere. Um, we, we tend to focus a lot on, on Australia and New Zealand, but that's mostly because of the, those are the contributions that we get and we do get lots of wonderful contributions from, from both, both places. And um, so Julie has asked me or invited me to, to talk tonight um, in Dude which is uh, Druids Down Under discussing everything. And we're going to tonight have a look at something that I've been sort of pondering or that I have pondered over uh, over the last sort of year, couple of years or so. Um, it's basically a the idea that, and it's, it's not something that's new, but it's something that you can kind of think about um, in a general sense, particularly if you're very, very new to Druidry, if you've not, if you're starting out on your path, if you've not started before and you're considering it, um, it's, it's something that, that you may find helps you kind of get those first steps up and running with regards to, to getting a, a handle on what Druidry is all about. And uh, it's to do with the concept of Arwen. And I will explain what that is shortly in case anybody's not sort of con um, uh, confident as to, to, to what the term means. Um, but to specifically using divination tools as a way of opening up your Arwen, your flow of Arwen, also to do with um, inspiring a flow of Arwen. If you're feeling completely stuck, you've got no idea what to what to talk about. You've got no idea even what subject to, to talk about. Uh, you can sometimes use a, a divination system and you could use any divina divination system you want to um, f encourage your flow, basically. So basically what I want to talk to talk about is the idea that Arwen is more than just what poets use to write their poetry. It's more than what people use to, to write um, the, the wonderful music that they write or to paint something amazing or, or whatever. It's not something that is just for the brilliantly talented artists among us. Arwen is a creative force, simple. It's a creative force. It is the act of creation. It is more than just making art. It is something that flows through everyone or that everyone can tap into that enables you to have a, an inspiration, a flash of inspiration. It is something that, I mean, when, when, for those who, who might be familiar with the, the story of Taliesin and, and how Gwian Bach, the, the small boy, he, he 
has the the drops of of Arwen on on his hand from the from the the boiling cauldron, and he sucks them, and and he becomes he doesn't just come he doesn't just become able to paint a painting he is filled with a knowledge that encompasses the past the present the future and for him that that flash of Arwen is not just about um what you do it, when you make art it's about knowing it's about understanding it's about perception so what what i uh, i'm suggesting is that Arwen is something that that encompasses all of the, the the things that come as creativity so it could be not just the, the the painting or the art or the acting dancing graphic work when you do graphic design people who do graphic design they're experiencing Arwen people who are solving a problem planning a project you may not see that as being a flash of Arwen you may not see that as creativity but solving problems planning projects they do take a certain amount of creativity they do take a certain amount of, of flash of inspiration and uh, a really good example is is a, a dear friend of mine who might be here I don't know if Sam's here or not but um, but uh, for those of you who know her um, Sam Travis taught a wonderful um, workshop at last year's uh, the not last year's yes last year's Last year's um, Oboard Southern Hemisphere Assembly taught a wonderful workshop about the Arwen of fencing. She's a, a she does swordplay, modern Western so, um, historical Western swordplay, and she uh, taught it as as a as her Arwen. It's her bardic skill is is this ability to uh, to train in this martial art, to uh, perform in this martial art, and to teach it. And that is her bardic gift. That's what she feels it is, and 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 I find that quite inspiring because it basically teaches you that that it's more than um, than than the things that you would normally perceive a bard to be. You know that that perception of of somebody sitting by the fire, telling a wonderful story, singing a wonderful song. But for those of us who aren't always able to tap into that particular uh, experience so um, perhaps if you if you don't live around somewhere where there is a regular bardic circle if you um, if, if it's too warm for you to have a fire where you are I mean certainly where we are right now it's it's freezing and we might have the fire going um, we don't tonight but, but you probably do where you are I know Julie does where she is um the 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 quarterly magazine sorry i'll just i'll just interrupt myself natalie um the the magazine is called serpent star and i'll i'll post a link to it later on the um so yeah you might find that it's 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 too warm for a fire where you are you might find that you you don't like folk music heaven forbid that you don't like folk music but you, you may find that you don't don't like folk music so so it, it's a different kind of music but it's still creativity it's so it, it, it's all of these things is the point that I'm making and one of the things that I used to do and and I still will do it occasionally and it is still part of of my occasional practice is I used to make a uh, altar cloths and I used to crochet them and I used to do them as uh, they would be 108 row by 108 stitch so that they could be used similar to a set of prayer beads you could actually focus on the the rows the pattern in the rows and i used to obtain the pattern by uh drawing tarot cards and i had a system i had a method whereby i would use the tarot cards i would assign certain colors sometimes depending how many colors i used i would assign uh, certain suits to certain colors or I would assign certain uh, types of cards to certain colors and then I would sit I would meditate on the person that I was making the, the cloth for if I was doing a commission and I would simply flip a card I'd flip the cards and flip them and as I flipped them I would write down the pattern and then I would take that pattern away and I would go through all of the yarn that I had and I would pick three or four different types of yarn in each color so that the creativity would come not just from the pattern but from the the materials that i was using as well i used all uh recycled reloved pre-loved yarn 
and so I would pull all of these pieces out and and that would basically be how it would it would come together how the altar cloth would come together so it was a, an example of using divination as a, a method for for unlocking a particular um, a particular creative process so there are uh, if you know anything about divination you, you will know that there are many different systems there are many different uh, ways of looking at at divination there are many different ways to read even the same deck of cards people will have different ways of reading them the same set of on and different people will have different ways of reading them and you can use the ways that you would normally read or you can use a, uh, a a set method you can even just do something completely random and what i i'm going to to do just now is i'm going to have a go at um, basically pulling some creative um, prompts out of the a set of cards what i'm suggesting is that is that you can actually treat this like if you if you go online and you you look up the the, the phrase story prompts or or um, uh, story prompts or uh, this is another way of, of describing them but it, it escapes me at the moment I can't remember what it is but if you if you google the word, the word story prompts you will actually find websites where they will actually give you a link uh, a list sorry a list of prompts that um, are basically just random sentences or random phrases or random ideas and the idea is to run your eye down this list until you come to something that makes you go oh and it, it sparks your imagination and it basically takes you off a um, takes you off on a tangent basically and what you do is is you you, you just use this as a, as a way of doing it so what I'm saying is that you can actually use divination um, methods to to reach this this sort of inspiration as well and you probably could use pretty much any type of divination you can think of obviously you probably want something that has a little bit of detail to it so um card decks are good for that but but if you're the type of person who likes to start with something that's really basic or something that's really simple um conceptually you could you could cast runes you could cast om and then use perhaps the the meanings that you've got either from a book that you that you've got that you keep with you do it with your set or the meanings that you've ascribed yourself you could basically ask for an idea cast cast the way you would cast and then use that idea take that idea and run with it but uh and you could even do things like a uh, a thing that a, a dear friend of mine used to refer to as as uh, used to refer to it as teslamancy and um teslamancy was uh his way of describing the um the idea that if you put your favorite music on shuffle if you take all the songs in your computer and put them on shuffle sometimes the the songs that come out are things that are telling you things you want to hear or things that you need to hear and you could take that one step further by saying okay let's let's put it on shuffle take the first five songs that i get and build a story out of it so so even even music on random anything that you can divine from you could potentially use to to prompt a story to prompt an idea to prompt a song to prompt a piece of poetry etc 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 it's a huge huge rabbit hole to go down but um, but I'm going to go on the edge of the rabbit hole right now and I'm going to do something very 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 simple and very very basic and um, and then uh, and hopefully this, <laughs> hopefully this will work um, the deck that I'm using just for reference and I will the card that I that I work with uh, will actually take a photo of the card and I'll post it in the comments of this video a little bit later on once I've had a chance to read your comments and, and answer your comments which I will do later on um, the deck that I'm using tonight is this deck here it's called the enchanted spell oracle um, medieval hedgewitch magic by priestess moon it's very pretty that's it there uh, and the reason I'm using this specific one tonight out of all the gazillion decks I have is that um, the cards themselves have a lot of detail in them so it gives me lots to, to talk about potentially so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shuffle and I'm going to ask for 
I'm just going to focus on something to something to tell everybody based on what I've been rambling about for the last 15 minutes. So let's grab something out. Okay. So I've just basically pulled a card. And the card that I've got is the card that's known as protection. And I will, I'll put it up. I'll show it to you here just as a very basic thing. But as I said, I will take a photo of this card and I will post it in the comments of this video as within a few minutes of coming off this this call. So so I will I will you'll have an opportunity to have a really good look at it and um, and see if you agree with with what I've said about it um, or or whether it it sparks something else for you. So the first thing that you notice when you look at this card is well first thing that I notice when I look at this card is that it refers to uh, a number of plants firstly um, specifically it refers to bay birch hazel lily lavender and valerian and without going into to sort of herb lore too much there are there are various um, things you could say about that particular combination of, of plants um, you could use those particular combination of plants as um, they could become names for characters in a story they could become uh, lines of a piece of poetry they could become a a, uh, a recipe a recipe in a in a story about somebody trying to find some magical uh, potion or spell they could become basically they could become anything really the the other thing that you notice when you look at this card or well, that I notice that I look at this card is the little mushrooms so you've got little mushrooms down the bottom and the mushrooms again you could write stories about fairies from the from the mushrooms you could write stories about fairies with the names of the herbs who come from the mushrooms you could i mean i know this is very very sort of basic and cutesy and, and all that sort of thing but i i really am just sort of riffing on an idea just for the sake of giving you an example of what you could do with it you can go into much much more detail you could go much much deeper than this of course the um the the particular um fairy figure or angel figure if i again you'll have an opportunity to have a look at it properly later on but what you, one of the things that you will see uh, or that you may be able to see when you look at the photo of the card is that there is some egyptian imagery with uh with her headdress um and that there is also uh what else am I looking at here? There's quite it's quite a lot of sort of mishmash of of sort of different ideas in terms of of what she's wearing and the actual fashion of what she's wearing, and any of those things can can prompt ideas about about how you could develop characters if you're writing a story, or you could simply write a basic poem about the the, the figure that's on the card. The card the, the the word for the card the keyword for the card is protection. So obviously the word protection could figure figure heavily into the the things that you write about in the uh, the story or in the poem or in the song you could come you could get a song out of this um, or you could simply go off and grab some pastels or some pencils and draw something that goes with this card you could you could draw out um, something that puts these particular elements together in a different way so I mean that, that that's a lot of rambling about just one card. So as you can see, it's something that that can 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 go off in a lot lot of different directions just from this one card. So what I'm going to encourage everyone to do, I'm going to encourage a few things, um, make make a few suggestions. One is if you want to have a go at this, um, by all means go and grab a, uh, a grab your favourite deck or just grab maybe even a deck that you don't use terribly often or a, a divination set that you don't use terribly often. You could go off and, and find something um, or even an app. If you don't have any decks of your own, get yourself a tarot app or something like that and, and get something of your own. Lots and lots of people on Druids Down Under have divination sets available um plug 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 they uh and and just have a go at this 
um, have a go at, at producing something big or small based on these particular um, this particular idea. You can post it in the comments below. You can um, submit it to to Drew. It's down under for for use uh, on our Facebook on the Facebook page. Uh, you can, if you are a member of the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids, you can also um, submit it for inclusion in the next edition of Serpent Star, which comes out for Imok. Um, and the I will be putting out a call for content for Serpent Star coming up very soon. And the um, as I said, it is it is a, a publication that is produced by members of of Obot of the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids, but the actual published um, publication of Serpent Star is available for anyone to read for free online. So um, it, we, I have my own Facebook page for Serpent Star, so feel free to pop over to Serpent Star, just Serpent Star, but all one word, and um, and come on over and and su um, subscribe, whether you're a member of Obod or not. Um, if you are a member of Obod, um, you're welcome to to send me some some information, send me some um, submissions based on on this little talk that I've done tonight, and um, and but make sure that if you do submit something that is based on this talk, um, I'd really really love it if you could write something to go with it that talks about how you've taken that that idea from from this talk. It would be lovely to do that. So, um, be lovely to share some of your, some of your work. So um, there was something else that I was going to mention tonight, and I can't. Oh, that's what it was. Um, I do want to, to make a little bit of an announcement um, and I will be checking in with uh, those who have done dudes before me um, just to make sure that this is okay. But um, I have been having a chat to, to Julie and um, I'm thinking that the, uh, the Serpent Star channel on YouTube, there is actually a Serpent Star channel on YouTube which has not been previously used. And um, I've had a chat with Julie and we're going to look at the possibility of, as well as having these uh, dude talks hosted on uh, Druids Down Under, we're also going to look at hosting them on the YouTube channel as well, on the Serpent Star YouTube channel. So stay tuned for more news about that. That's probably going to be coming up in the next week or two as soon as I can organise, get my act together and get it organised. Um, but just so you know, that's going to be happening. And um, that's pretty much all I've got to, to say tonight. I've, I'm actually at 22 minutes, so I'm doing pretty well, I think. Um, but I want to say thank you to everybody for, for coming in, everybody for joining. Thank you so much for coming. And um, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a fill up here. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go and get myself a cup of tea, and I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna read all your comments, um, and I'm gonna respond to to any questions that you have. And I'm also gonna post a picture of that part of that card for you. So um, so yeah. So everybody, thanks so much for coming, and um, and have a lovely night. And I'll see you on the page. Bye.